Hey, what's up guys? And welcome back to IGCSC Success. I hope you are all doing well. Oh my goodness, it's almost Christmas. I know it's been quite a long time since I've done a proper video, but I got COVID and <laughs> it wasn't very nice. And just trying to navigate what has been another difficult year, I just needed some me time I guess. But I am now doing well and I'm happy to be back and filming this video for you guys today. So today's video is all about common mistakes and pitfalls I guess I see when students complete paper one. So there's going to be about seven that I'm going to go through. Make sure you watch this video until the very end. Buckle up, get a drink and let's get this video started. Now number one is not paying attention to the command verbs used in the question. Take the very first question for example. Now as you can imagine the first question on the paper should be a walk in the park. It's asking you to select and retrieve two explicit ideas so two quotations offering a response in your own words is not required and quite frankly a waste of time don't do it now number two is another mistake i often see my students make and using your own words is in bold for a reason now to answer this question successfully you have to show a secure understanding of both words in the phrase you can use appropriate synonyms if you like, or you can explain each phrase in its entirety. It's, it's whatever works best for you. Just be sure to explain both strands and use your own words. Number three, the dreadful summary question. I mean, lots can go wrong here. I really don't know where to start. I mean, the biggest issue I often see when marking paper one scripts is students again lifting from the text remember you can lift i guess scientific or geographical or technical terms i guess but for the most part your summary needs to be in your own words and let's not forget that cambridge can be quite mean sometimes and they can ask you to summarize two strands so it's really important that you read the question and if you are required to summarize two strands just sort of strike the right balance between summarizing both strands equally now question question four <laughs> mistake number four i'm going to call them the question two a now for the question two a strands you have to select a word or phrase from the text which suggests the same idea as the word or phrase underlined i hope that made sense and there's four of them there are four marks up for grabs so you really want to get all four marks but also you don't want to be scanning the text over and over and over again. I often tell my students to read the question to A's before reading the text. And when you are reading it for meaning, hopefully you can just quickly highlight and that question can be done quite quickly. I guess the important thing here is that Cambridge only want you to select a word or phrase and that word or phrase should be able to substitute whatever is underlined i.e it should still make sense pitfall number five or mistake number five is question 2c I often refer to this as, I guess, a watered down writer's effect question. With this question, you want to remember that Cambridge are asking you to select one powerful image only. You are not required to analyze three, four, six, whatever, you're not going to get extra marks. If anything, if you analyze a whole bunch of images, you are not demonstrating that you understand what is required of the question. Just one is absolutely fine. And remember to say three, three distinct things about the image you have chosen. And lastly, make sure your comments link directly to the focus given in the question. Number six, question 2D, the second call question, the writer's effect question. I guess the biggest problem I see when marking some of my students' scripts is students not penetrating that surface meaning. They rely too heavily on exploring explicit ideas. And this question really is for you to show off your language skills, to show an awareness 
of how language works, how beautiful language is, to explore those different shades of meaning. So don't rely too heavily on explicit meanings. So number seven, the last sort of hiccup that I often see is to do with the extended writing response, that mammoth question tagged on at the end. The trickiest question without a doubt. Lots and lots can go wrong here. So I'm just gonna list a bunch of things I often see when marking my student script. Number one, no evidence of planning. Number two, Three. Number two, not creating a convincing or suitable voice. Number three, lifting from the text. Number four, no development, no inferential skills. And number five is <laughs> definitely what I see the most, and that is not allowing yourself enough time to complete it properly. I would say to answer this question successfully, bearing in mind it's worth 25 marks, you need at least 40 minutes. You cannot answer this question well in 20 minutes, 15 minutes. I've had some of my students try, but unfortunately they've, uh, they failed. Ultimately, what makes a successful extended writing response is a response that assumes the role perfectly. You understand the character, you understand their language, your stylistic choices, your punctuation, the imagery you use, everything you include in terms of content and the way it's said shows that you understand the character being depicted. Remember, you are not writing as you. You are writing as someone else. And that is tricky. And that's it for today, guys. Let me know in the comments below if you make any of these mistakes, if you are guilty. And hopefully, after watching today's video, you won't make them again. Um, have a lovely Christmas, and I promise I will be back soon with a new video. Until next time, bye-bye.